One of the more interesting phenomena I run into when I dyno trucks is that I get a customer who comes in and we run the truck once and it makes 500 horsepower and they're thrilled, right? It makes 500 horsepower and call it 1,000 foot-pounds of torque. Then I run a backup run, it makes 500 horsepower and 925 foot-pounds of torque. We run maybe a third run, 505 horsepower, 1,200 foot-pounds of torque. And the customer is pulling their hair out because they don't know why the torque number is all over the board. I'm Nick Pregnitz, and today on Diesel Insights, we're going to talk about those horsepower and torque numbers that we see on the dyno. We're going to talk about some of the inconsistencies and dive into why they matter. First, as a frame of reference, I'm going to draw a gas dyno curve. And the reason I want to do that is because most of you guys come from the gas tuning world or the gas performance world, and you know, you know horsepower, you know torque, and you know usually a 500 horsepower car naturally aspirated makes about 500 foot-pounds of torque. If it makes more than that, well, the rev range is low. If it makes higher than that, well, it's probably a high revving car. As I draw the typical dyno graph for the gasoline engine, bottom would be RPM increasing, and this would be horsepower and torque increasing as we go up. So the torque curve, usually going to peak somewhere in the 35, 3600 range, a little bit below that peaking and then falling off as the engine falls out of its efficiency range in the higher revs depending on head, head flow, etc. But your torque curve for gasoline engines relatively flat if the engine's good breathing. A flat torque curve gives us a horsepower curve that looks like this. Okay, this would be 5252 where they cross. I'm sure you've read five Wikipedia articles on the calculation for horsepower and torque, so I won't bore you with that, but the, uh, the horsepower curve looks something like this. So at low RPM, this is your available power. So you go 10% on the throttle, you get this much, you go 100% on the throttle, you get this much. Maybe this is 100 horsepower available. However, up here at 5,000 RPM, you got 500 horsepower available. So if you floor a gasoline car at 1200 RPM, nothing happens. Maybe you get a downshift, but if it's a stick shift car, you get a slow, even pull, and then as the car comes up in the revs, you feel the power, okay? On a diesel engine, it's different. The shape of the torque curve on a diesel engine is much, much different. So let's look at that. On a diesel, the shape of the horsepower curve is almost flat. The shape of the torque curve when the horsepower curve is flat, is this ski slope style curve. Why is that interesting? Well, a diesel engine has an awesome ability to lug. And the reason it has that ability to lug is because you have horsepower available at very low RPM. So as you flat foot the throttle at say 1200 RPM down here, or 1500 RPM, whatever this is, you have 430 horsepower available. Okay, that's amazing. But that 430 horsepower comes with a price, and that price is torque. Torque sounds great, but it beats the hell out of parts. So when we diesel guys hear torque, we think, awesome. This thing has an awesome ability to lug and pull the gear, meaning it's not gonna downshift. Meaning that while we're towing, we can keep it in high gear and pull that load, great. What does that mean for durability and longevity engine parts? Well, it's hard on parts. Torque comes with a price, and that price is cylinder pressure. No matter how you cut it, the only way to get more torque out of an engine is a higher integral of cylinder pressure. You can shape the, you can shape the cylinder pressure curve a little nicer, you can mess with timing, but one way or another, you're gonna have that peak cylinder pressure come up. From 500 foot-pounds of torque to 1,000 foot-pounds of torque, your cylinder pressure is gonna come up significantly, okay? And that means harder on head gaskets, harder on bearings, harder on connecting rods, basically anything that operates, transmissions, drive shafts, rear ends, all the parts in a diesel have to be built bigger. And the reason is to handle that torque load. So there's a consequence there, but diesels are built for it, right? I mean, these things come with a thousand foot pounds from the factory. So if we're making 12, 1400 foot pounds tuned, well, it's only 20 or 30% above the factory number. Also, it's a lot of fun to drive. So that big torque number means that you have horsepower available anywhere you want it. So all you have to do is creep into the throttle and the boost comes up and the truck moves a bunch of air, cylinder pressure comes up, 
fuel rate comes up, everything comes up to make that horsepower number that you want at that low RPM. And you, when you make that horsepower at low RPM, torque, right? Let's talk about why that's different than a gasoline engine. Okay, so in this drawing behind me, I have the gasoline engine naturally aspirated. We open the throttle. There's only so much atmosphere that can pack into that engine at an RPM. We're never gonna make more than 100% efficiency on the engine. We're never gonna, be, never gonna be able to make more than that small amount of torque at low RPM. Let's turbocharge it. Okay, we use the same technology the diesel guys use. So add a turbocharger to your gasoline engine. Can we now compete with the diesel? No. Two words, combustion stability. If you start adding big boost to gasoline engines at low RPM, you start running into combustion stability issues. And what that means is you can't control the combustion process. And when you can't control it, it means it gets out of control, meaning the cylinder pressure spikes become something that you can't control with the ECU and you start hurting parts. So either crack pistons, crack ring lands, blow head gaskets, whatever it may be, you can only go so far on certain grades of gasoline. So as you go from 87 to 89 to 93, up to E85, now you can start to really control combustion. You can start to really make big torque on a gasoline engine. Great, but not everybody's running E85, right? So the diesel has a distinct advantage in making torque because it's not at the mercy of combustion stability like a gasoline engine is. We are injecting fuel at the peak or near the peak of top dead center, meaning we can control combustion stability by the pressure and the rate at which we inject fuel. Okay, so what does this mean on the dyno? Well, you look at the torque curve on a diesel engine, and if you look at this point on the graph three or four inches in, and you look at the next point on the graph three or four inches back, you can see, well, those two points, there's a big difference in the torque available there. There's not that big of a difference in the horsepower available there. In fact, if I'm making 500 horsepower at, say, 1,200 RPM, which is insane, by the way, uh, you'd be at about 2,200 foot-pounds of torque. However, if you step it up to just 1,500 RPM, all of a sudden the torque comes down to 1,750. Same power outputs, different operating RPM, tremendous difference in torque output. So if I start the test in fifth gear at 1,500 RPM versus 1,700 RPM, I can get a much different reading on the torque spike. Why is this important? It's only important if you're gonna run the engine there. Okay, and a lot of the modern automatic diesels are designed to downshift and grab more RPM to be gentler on parts and put the engine in a more efficient operating range if I'm looking for that kind of power. However, if you have a six-speed truck, manual, you know, 2003 or six Dodge Ram or something like that, and you're really lugging the hell out of it and you want to see, okay, how much can I really lug this thing? Well, you want to pull it back to 1200 RPM? Go ahead and do it. Would I recommend it? Probably not. Is it that important in passing power or performance on the drag strip? No, you're not gonna be running at those RPMs on the drag strip, so those torque numbers aren't important. Uh, the, the power you're gonna be making from 3,100 RPM down to your gear shift down to 2,400 RPM is much more critical than those big torque spikes down low in the rev range. Our goal with custom tuning isn't to go whale hunting and get you the biggest torque number you can possibly get. We wanna understand where you're using the truck, what that operating range looks like, so as it shifts, you know, where is the operating range that's most useful to you? And we're gonna fatten up the torque curve in that usable operating range. I'm not gonna pay attention to torque way below 1500 RPM or 1200 RPM in a truck that uses the automatic transmission to avoid that operating range. I wanna focus on the stuff that's most important to you, make the truck durable, make it efficient where you are using it, give you a nice, fat, fun, drivable torque curve. So the next time you go to the dyno and someone's running your truck in manual and they give you a torque spike of 1,000 foot-pounds, and then the next run, it's 1,200 foot-pounds. Take a look at the dyno sheet and see where the test started, right? Odds are that the test started at much lower RPM the second time, and that's why the truck ran that torque spike like it did. I'm Nick Pregnance, this is Diesel Insights. Thanks for watching, subscribe, and we'll catch you next time.